I like this one better because I like the angle of it and it suits his head. how human should his hands be we want humanish hands but with claws on them because the dogs don't have they have a dew claw so let me figure out the hand And of course this guy hasn't got his hands spread out, but we can we can fake that out, right? Yeah. Most lichen, oh, don't most lycanthropes usually have like elongated limbs? I don't know. I think it depends on what uh, depends on what uh, of, um, mythology you're you're following, you know, following. Mm -hmm. But um, so, how much of the human and how much of the of the canine or the lan the lupine are you going to insert into? The, you know to combine them so we want the claws now elongated limbs you mean like the four the, the front legs or the forearms would be a lot longer um, in my eyes it's more the hind legs for the human at this point because they kind of have um, they kind of have like that back and page that kind of like sticks up and then it right. pushes forward to where the, uh, the knee well, is yeah, I haven't gotten all the way there yet. More like kind of like that hunch thing I was talking about before. Mm -hmm. I think of a uh, the satyr, a satyr as being kind of a similar sort of a situation. You know, where you're going to turn the back leg into into the uh, the wolfish leg, right? Right. So he's going to be like from the side. His shoulders are going to be up high. I want to see. I wonder if he would have clavicles, but he probably would because he would be more human. 
and then, uh, well, it would depend on what part of the metamorphosis he was in. So if he's he's going to have these shoulder blades that stick up a little bit, he's going to have more of a barrel chest, right? And he's going to have hind legs that do this thing. Right? right? Something like that. And there's his tail. And the arms, the forearms, his shoulders. The elbows are close to the body on, on a dog. So how close to the body do, I mean, how much of the human and how much of the dog do you want to have in, in these creatures? So is he going to have the backbone with the spines that stick out? like the dog has? Is he going to have the flat pelvis that the dog has? Or is he going to have the human pelvis? Where does the human start and the dog or the wolf end or start? You know, where does the human end and the wolf start? So, I mean, it's all a, it's all a matter of your own invention. How do you want it to what do you want it to do? And are they going to have a bigger cranium? than a wolf might, so they have more of a larger brain. You start doing that too much and you'll start getting into more human-like features, but you want the big jaw, the, the wolf jaw, right? The big, powerful jaws. How smart is the werewolf? So you tell me, what do you think? How do we're at what point of the metamorphosis are we here? See, I would tend to keep his forearms, his upper body more humanish. So pectoralis major, an upright rib cage, but maybe barrel it out a little bit more, a little more barrel chested. Maybe slim the hips down a little bit, flatten them just a little, but not too much. I mean, if he's going to walk on his front legs or is he going to walk on his back on um, four legs or on his back legs most of the ones I've ever seen if you go from like Lon Chaney style wolf man they usually just had a hairy in the face and they look more human right um yeah they had they had more of a human pelvis um more because more because it was a person in the outfit Mm -hmm. You know, they made mm -hmm. them up like that. But then when you get to Harry Potter and you see a lycanthrope or whatever, it's digital. So mm -hmm. the arms are long and spindly. The legs are long and spindly. And it's up there. It's big, long-limbed. And then there's a several in-between. So it's kind of a, I guess it's what you say. It's, it's all perspective a kind of thing. Yeah, it's a personal preference, really. So I like it to have the long muzzle but be somewhat more human in the upper body, maybe heavier heavier in the chest, but we're going to go with the, uh, the pectoralis layout. I'm going to go with that. You guys can do whatever you like, but mm. I'm going to... Uh, I like your Lon Chaney. But I was going to be very, more wolfish in the back. Um Like you're thinking of Red Riding Hood. And he's <laughs> going to have a rough, I'm going to put a rough around his, you know, fur around his neck, maybe down his belly, and uh, give, keep his modesty. <laughs> mm. And of course, he has yeah, to have like a tail. Playing the Incredible Hulk, you know, he yeah. never split his jeans. I know, amazingly, the jeans just stretched. Yeah, so, they just stretched, and they, and they were like they were cut at the bottom. Yeah, How do you Levi's. do that? Shaggy. Le yeah, Levi's. Levi's. Good old Levi's. <laughs> Levi's they, were they, amazing. You could shred them and they'd come out to be like pant short pants. You just got short shorts. So, <laughs> oh, I remember that. <laughs> I kind of like it. I kind of like this, uh, this amalgamation. So I'm using That's so many different references that no one can say I'm stealing from any one particular reference.
right? Well, that's why I didn't want to go when I was doing mine. I didn't want to take a picture from something I saw or a photo of somebody because I was afraid people would say, oh, well, you copied that from this. And I'd rather go, with the, I just wanted to go with the concept, but I'm seeing how what you said is like very, very true. I need that reference. Yeah, I think you still, no matter what, you still, now I could do I this. There's two different ways I could do this. I could do it with um, just try to redraw it, or I could actually do a trans. I'll do a transfer trace. What time is it? Four, five o'clock. I'll do a transfer trace because I've got my trace. I got my uh, tracing paper here, so I, I was able to be free and loose and keep a very gestural effect on my drawing because I can change things and make make them altered depending on my whim. So I have this uh, tracing paper I get in large rolls, which is convenient. So I could just tear off what I need. And this is how I would prep it for a painting, too. If I was doing a painting, I would sketch it out on tracing paper first. And then... Um, Once I've sorted out my design, I do a clean drawing. So maybe I'll only get to the trans the transfer because the white transfer paper I have to put on the gray paper is in the studio, and it's getting kind of light. So I'm just going to to um, work up my detailed drawing with my references, and then I'll trans we'll transfer it and finish it out next week and plus I need to find better references for the hands because I I want realistic ish hands and claws and I, I want reference for that so that they're as real as possible but definitely the fingers are going to come towards us like so and the claws are going to go down I'll do this in charcoal so you can see what I'm doing How about a pencil that actually has some length on it? That would be nice. Yeah, a little better. All right, so I want to get, you know, maybe I'll do use my own hand as reference, you know, and try to get the, because uh, I like the way the thumb comes out towards the camera, you know, and that could be like real forced perspective. We could make this like really into like a, a Marvel comic style thing, but I want to have good reference for that that hand thing. So I'm just going to, gloss over the hands for now, find some better reference for the claw-like hands, or take pictures of my own, or draw my own hands. So you want to draw, and also I'm not sure, I think I want to push his arms apart now that I think about it. Eraser? Do we have? Oh, I'll just shift it. I'll just shift it up. I haven't gotten that far. I think I'll put the hand here. And I can make this hand force the force perspective. Remember, we want this to come towards us. I I never watched I don't you know what, Lillian? I don't even have a TV. I've never watched Twilight or any of those uh, shows because I don't I don't have a TV. And um uh, I do watch, sometimes I watch stuff on the computer. I want this to come forward. Just come forward. So, and I definitely want the musculature to be prominent. So he's going to have massive traps. Here's his trapezius. And the traps come up, of course, and insert. Gosh. Did I'm glad you that? caught that. I was going to ask you about that, how you were going to do a trapezius and stuff like that and his it lower abdominals. Inserts, what does it insert in front of the triceps or behind it? Let's find out. Um... Mm, 
No, I don't want to have too much. I don't want to get too much uh, other reference in there. I want to be able to keep, you know, if you, if you look at too many other things, then your stuff starts looking like everybody else's. So, aha. This is what I'm looking for. I want to see it from the back. Yes, I do believe that the latissimus goes under the traps. I have to find my Bern Hogarth books. Ah, here we go. Latissimus going up under. Here's the trapezius, or the triceps. It's the latissimus and the teres major. That is not the rhomboid. Well, maybe it is the rhomboid. Wait. No, no, you're wrong. You're totally wrong. This is not the infraspinatus. Infraspinatus. That is totally wrong. I'm sorry. It is wrong. The infraspinatus does not go into the humerus. It is infraspinatus. It's on the um, scapula. All right, so here's his pectoralis major, and that goes up in front of the bicep. And then we have the bicep. And then we have the latissimus, and then we have the tricep. Got it. Now I got it. Okay. And this is the deltoids. And this is going to be the forearm, and I'll have to sort out the brachialis. But here's epicondyle. It goes the, the triceps behind the latissimus. And there's the teres major, which is in there too. And then, of course, we have the serratus. Since this latissimus is going to be coming up like this, the serratus is going to come up from underneath the latissimus. And it's going to, because then we got to keep the beautiful parts of the human figure, the obliques. And they come up and they inter, interweave with the, they have to interweave with those, those serratus there. All right. And there's another muscle under here, and I think it's the caracchiobrachialis, which it makes part of the armpit. So, of course, I guess I could have looked at it here, but I'm still pretty... I think the latissimus is in here, and this little bit is the teres major. Mm -hmm. Biceps, the pectoralis major, and then the biceps. So when you're making up creatures, you've got to be extra specially aware of all the... Um, variations in or the, the underlying underpinnings of the anatomy because you're, if you're trying to make it structurally accurate. Palm of the hand. Yeah, see, when I was doing it, I just I just quickly went through and did mine. My, my arms are way too short, I think. Mm -hmm. I'll send it to you if you want to have fun with it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to do this for now. Okay, then the abdominals. Of course, his fur is going to be covering over his abdominals, but we can show a little bit of the top section. Um, his abs are going to be there. And then the, the serratus will be here. And the exterior obliques there. And some long tendons coming here. Now the quadriceps on the leg 
Well, it keeps them kind of human. There's the Sartorius. But we know that it has to become, once we get past the joint, this joint, it has to be more wolfish. You know, the one thing I've noticed through all the wolf movies and all the special effects, they always keep the the, for, the, the, um, the, the femur uh-huh. the, about, about the same. They keep the um, calf, or, well, I, I don't know the muscles, uh, the bones in that one. Um, I know it isn't ulna and radius, because that's in the rest. No, tibia and fibula. Thank you, tibia and fibula. They usually elongate those and make the foot really, really long. Well, the, this is the foot right here on right, the right. dog. This is the foot part. These are the toes. This is the heel. Right, and they usually elongate the foot to compensate for everything else, so it looks more doggish. In, in Lillian, just notice that same thing too. It, they they elongate the foot and mm-hmm. make it a real part of you know the animal. Well, that's really what is going on. I mean, that's accurate. I think that's the best way to do them. Like you're doing it now. You you kept the you know the legs almost the same and the the tibia and Whatever, fibula. yeah. Tibia, fibula. Yes. The funny yeah. bone things. And <laughs> but you've I mean you you've kept those in there and you've elongated the foot just like they do. And then when you came to the upper part, you just enlarged it, which is pretty much I guess what they thought it was but what what it would it would have been. Well, I would think that he metamorphosized more into the wolf, then the femurs would shorten up and the pelvis would flatten out and he would become more like the dog. But you can see that, you know, the forearm looks very much human-like here. And then we get this upper arm here. And then it goes up into the shoulder where things start to really change on the dog. Oh, right, right. All right. I I couldn't see your cursor. Well, the the funny thing is, is most of the muscles – on a, on a dog, well, that you can see isn't really muscle. It's like rib cage and everything else making it look like his chest is barreled and he's huge. When it's pretty much the opposite. They have a lot of power in the hind legs. At least wolves do. And do- and well, dogs, well, they, they run. They do. But they also have pretty strong chest area. I mean, it's it's narrower, but it's still got a lot. There's a lot of power in the neck and the jaw. Yeah. And that's carried by the exactly, and then they carry that into the into the you know you know special effects stuff where he's got a huge torso, and his hind his hind end is still powerful, but made for chasing someone down, while the top half is made for rending rending and ripping. Mm-hmm. At least that's the way I see it. I could be wrong. They could have said, "Hey, this was simpler for us to do." I'll make his eyes bigger because we can. I was thinking about doing another shadow wolf thing like I did before. But I don't know. Now, how did you do that with the, with the face? I, I I saw you do it. I, I was here. I was watching. I know I was watching because I was here when you did it. But how did you get it to do that? What do you do? What? Uh, how did you get a dog face on there? Yeah. 
I I just don't understand how you got it to. You lengthen the muzzle and um, wrinkle up the nose. Okay. It'll just take some practice for me to do that. Um, everything takes practice. Sorry, I, like that, I, I don't talk when I'm thinking. I, I know, I'm sorry. I, I know. It's, pretty it's harder to talk when I'm thinking. Oops, I didn't get that other hand in there very well, did I? Gotta have a tail, right? All right, so I'll take this and put it on the other paper and we'll do more of a rendered. I might shift his head around a little bit. I might um, find some better reference for his claws and we'll do that on Tuesday night.